Okay, you remember the demo we did in class where we took an inclined plane and we let a felt object slide and we found that at an angle of about 25 degrees it broke the static friction and we wanted to find the coefficient of friction. We realize this is a dynamics problem. We know the vector sum of the forces equal mass times acceleration. We draw our forces, a good free body diagram. There's three forces, the weight, force of gravity, the normal force, and the force of friction. We can add these vectorally to show that the sum of the forces equals zero if it's not accelerating. And that's a situation where we just break the static friction. We could right away solve this by just writing the tangent of theta is equal to the force of friction divided by the normal force because the force of friction is equal to mu times the normal force and we'd be done. What is the tangent of theta of 25 degrees? I know that tangent looks like this. I know the tangent of 45 is 1. I know the tangent of 30 is about 1 over, it's 1 over the root 3, so that's 1.7. So that's about 0.55. So for 25 degrees, I estimated 45. I was pretty close. My calculator gave me 40.47. So the coefficient of static friction is about 0.47. Now it gets interesting when we want to find the coefficient of dynamic friction, of kinetic friction. So we can solve this very quickly just by taking the three forces acting on this and adding them together so the snake bites its tail so we show that the sum of the forces are zero because it's in static equilibrium at the moment we break the friction. Even though we can solve this with one equation and this graphic, it's still very instrumental to separate it into the x and the y components. Okay, so we ask ourselves if this were going to accelerate, it would accelerate in this direction. And so we pick this as the x-axis where I might have acceleration, I do later, and this is the y-axis where the sum of the acceleration is zero. I've separated my weight into the x and y components and then I can substitute them in where in the x direction I have friction plus weight in the x direction. This is this component of the weight which is pushing it down the ramp and then I have in the y direction this component of weight which is being compensated by the normal force. We, uh, we look at our axes to see what's positive and negative and recognize the force of friction is in the negative x direction and the y component of the weight is in the negative y direction. And in the static case, again, when we just break that static friction, we can solve this and say, yeah, at this point, that x component of the weight is equal to the force of friction, which is mu times the normal force. And the normal force is equal to the weight in the y direction. And so substituting this in, we find, yes, mu is equal to tan theta. Now how does this change when we actually get acceleration? When we break that static friction, the acceleration is in the positive x direction. And now this is no longer zero, this is mass times acceleration in the x direction. Now before we finish this off, let's find out what the acceleration is. Well we remember, we remember that delta x for one of the classes was about 45 centimeters and delta t was one second. So the average velocity is going to be delta x over delta t is just 0.45 meters per second. Now if I were to look at the velocity versus time graph, I know that I should have constant acceleration, so this slope should be constant. And if the average velocity is 0.45 meters per second, the final velocity at the end of the trip should be twice that. Because I start at zero, I finish at twice the average velocity, and so velocity final should be about 0.9 meters per second. I'm going to round that to one meter per second, and I know if I started at zero meters per second, and I finish at one meter per second after one second, the acceleration is about one meter per second squared. So this acceleration is about one meter per second squared in the kinetic friction case at 25 degrees. So this changes the subsequent equations. Now the subsequent equations read the force of friction is equal to the x component of the weight minus mass times acceleration in the x direction. Let's check this. If it accelerates really fast, 
then the friction would be less. That's correct. And we know that the force of friction is equal to mu times n. So let's take these two sides and we have weight in the x direction minus ma divided by n is equal to mu. So substituting in our values, now we have the same expression, but we have this acceleration term here. So the m naughts cancel now, but what doesn't cancel is the acceleration of gravity. So now instead of sine theta over cosine theta, we have g sine theta minus one meter per second squared over g cosine theta. Substituting these values in, yes, I wanted the extra precision, so I used the calculator, guilty as charged, and um, this winds up being 4.2 meters per second squared minus one, 3.2 meters per second squared divided by 9.1 meters per second squared is about 0.36, significantly less than 0.47.